Next are back to school highlights, Dr. Dupree. Yes, sir. We're about to begin the 60th anniversary year of Fort Bend ISD when school starts in two days. And it's not often we have the opportunity just before starting school to have a board meeting. So, I mean, literally, this is a five to eight minute report. But we there's several key things that are rolling out this year that were included in the 18 bond or that the board has recently taken action on. So we thought it would be good just to give a few highlights of some of these items. And we gave the board just a handout that you can see. But I'm going to turn it over to Chief Ryder to kind of start off. He's going to hit a few of the security items and then we'll move through a few other key areas very quickly. Good evening, uh, President Burdine and board and Dr. Dupree. I love going first. That's awesome. So we are celebrating tonight. This is, uh, these are exciting times and, and uh, we just want to highlight three of our major safety initiatives uh, that we've been working on recently. Uh, first of all, the Rhino Wear door locks. These are floor mounted door locks, as you know. And uh, this is a safety advisory committee recommendation. Uh, we came to the board. The board approved those. Uh, went to the bond and the voters approved those and so we we have ordered almost 7,400 of these door locks and almost every single one of them have been installed already on the classrooms uh, for the start of school so we're excited about that we even created a short video to uh, to assist the teachers and the students in the proper usage and the procedures for those uh, so we're excited about that uh, the scholarship badging system this is a new ID badging system for students and staff um, and the great thing about this badging system, it's scalable. And so we're going to be able to leverage this over time as we implement this, uh, this coming school year uh, with barcodes, with uh, the radio frequencies in the cards, just like we have now, uh, but we have two separate cards now. And so uh, staff members will be able to open their doors and, and do the things that they do, while students will be able to use their ID cards uh, for lunch, uh, lunch lines, uh, to check out library books. To, uh, to scan in on a portable kiosk as they come into the school so that we know if they're supposed to be in the school or not. Um, this system will update nightly with our existing systems uh, that, that tell us if a student's been suspended or if they're not supposed to be at that campus. Um, so we'll have the ability to very quickly uh, tell if a student is supposed to be on that campus or in that location or not. Um, then eventually we'll be able to use that same system for the school buses. Uh, through a tablet and a scanning system, you can tap your badge on that and it'll bring up a picture of the person that the badge is registered to in a green box that says they're supposed to be there or a red box around them that says they're not supposed to be there. So I think that's a great uh, safety enhancement. And then the call boxes. Um, again, we, we ordered 44 uh, emergency call boxes. We put two at every high school, one in the student parking lot, uh, one in the athletic area. We put one at every middle school campus. Uh, we put two at Mercer Stadium and two at Hall Stadium, and we put one at uh, all three of our agricultural centers. Uh, those are solar powered. Again, the, just like we were talking about earlier, we didn't have to run any power lines to them. Uh, so solar powered boxes, and they go straight to our Fort Bend ISD police dispatcher, so it's immediate access to get help if, if somebody needs it. Um, and so it's, it's just a good visual. Uh, these, are, these are three major safety uh, initiatives that, that I think uh, uh, very much support our students and our staff and our community, and uh, I appreciate your support on those. Thank you, Chief. Do anyone oh. have any comments or questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to talk about the technology toolkit. And uh, uh, Fort Bend ISD took a phase in approach. Uh, there's going to be two phases with the rollout of the technology toolkit. As you can see, there's been uh, or there are 36,000 devices that are being rolled out uh, as we speak. By the end of September, you can see the breakdown up on the screen as far as all the different types of technology and where they will be going. I think what's important to note is that there are currently 37 campuses that are going to be a part of phase one for the 1920 school year. For the 2021 school year, we're going to go ahead and include the rest of the campuses. Um, the campus readiness level for blended learning was the determining factor to decide whether a campus was going to be a phase one or a phase two. Um, I think it's also important to know that teaching and learning is going to continue to, to provide the professional development needed to teachers to ensure that they are fully prepared for the phase two approach that, that's going to occur in 2021. When it comes to new programming, uh, we are actually 
expanding the half-day program. As you all know, we're going to go ahead and proceed with a full-day pre-K program. As of now, we have, uh, as you can see on the screen, 1,900 students for week one. I will tell you, as of about an hour and a half ago, uh, that number is a little incorrect. Uh, so I'm going to tell you we have 1,682 students that are fully enrolled and we have 317 students that are in the queue. So we're off by uh, a few. So the actual number is 1,999 if you do the math. So we're struggling to get that one last student so I can come and report 2,000 to you all, but uh, that didn't happen. But what, I can, but what I'm happy to share is that last year we had 45 pre-K teachers. This year we expanded to 57, so we're at 57 now, and with that comes the paraprofessionals uh, for each classroom as well. Uh, we do have the capacity for 2,244 students. Uh, we, are, we anticipate that we're still going to go ahead and receive students as the week uh, progresses and, of yeah. course, going into next I week. I would interrupt. It's actually 45 plus 57. We've, yes. We've uh, added 57 new pre-K teachers. Yes, 57 new pre-K teachers, which includes the 45 teachers from last year. So uh, that's the number we have uh, for this year. And of course, like I stated earlier, we also include paraprofessionals for each classroom as well, which takes us to that 11 to 1 ratio. Going on to the next program that we have, uh, Early College High School and the, P the Early College and Pathways in Technology, which we uh, refer to as PTEC. We have uh, the Early College High School at Marshall High School, and we have the PTEC programs at Willow Ridge and at Hightower. Uh, Hightower. And just to refresh everybody's memory, Hightower, their program is going to focus on histology and health informatics. And at Willow Ridge, it's going to be computer programming. We have the capacity for 100 students at e in each program. And during the summer, the Summer Bridge program began. So. You know, many might think that the school year is going to start on Wednesday. It actually started for these students with the summer bridge that we had in the summer. So uh, all the information that we have received is that it's been extremely successful. The summer bridge acts more as a freshman orientation that one would find if they were to enroll in college. So all the information that we have is that it's been extremely successful. TSI uh, testing has begun as well, and we have percentages and that looks uh, favorable for us as well. Moving on to new campuses, uh, what we have is we're excited with the James Reese Career and Technical Center. Uh, the center is going to provide or it's going to offer specialized courses for students, and that's literally for all students in, uh, in our district. I know you see the number that, six, that says 680 students. That's what we're going to have day one. Now, just so everybody understands that day one is not going to be Wednesday. Their first day is actually going to be on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, they're going to spend their day uh, at their home campus. But we do have two dual credit programs, and uh, they are education and training and the firefighter program that's going to be made available. Uh, we're also excited, obviously, with the 200-plus business partners. Uh, that, those partnerships are critical for the center because what they do is the partners provide a financial support. They provide support uh, when it comes to equipment. And they also are able to be uh, guest speakers for our students. So that's going to be critical for the center. Uh, so we look forward to opening that on Thursday. Um, the last new campus we have is Malala. Uh, it's going to open January 2020. I will tell you, uh, the students are being, as you all know, they are at Seguin. Uh, elementary and we have students at Oyster Creek K through first grade at Oyster Creek second through fifth at Seguin and the partnership has been excellent uh, the administrations are working well together the staff is excited uh, the campus actually had on August 2nd they had um, an activity which was more of a carnival it was a fair to have the parents uh, come speak and visit with campus administrators and the campus staff. Uh, I was there, Dr. Dupree was there, Dr. Mensa was there. Uh, it, was, it was a great event. It was for a few hours, but you could tell with the moment that we were there that the support was great. So uh, we have a lot of excitement with that as well. Uh, the campus is fully staffed, so I think it's important to note that they're gonna begin the year fully staffed. That's obviously always important for students uh, to have a teacher as soon as they walk in that door. Um, as far as the new campuses, that's all the information we have. So we're just ready to begin the school year and, and ring that bell at all the campuses that we have. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Do we have any questions or comments? Ms. Tossan? 
I just had one quick question back for Chief. Um, I know we're going to be rolling out the new ID badging system, and you talked about um, ki the kids scanning in and that type of thing. And you may have answered this question before, so I apologize if you have. Well, but are we going to have one point of entry at our campuses, or will there be multiple points of entry? I'm just thinking about the flow of students and they're about to get back to school. I know that we haven't gotten that quite up and running just yet, but it's soon to come. Yeah, I think it depends on the campus. Uh, so for the elementaries, it's easier to have one point of entry because we have fewer students. Uh, middle schools and high schools will probably not have one point of entry since you have bus ramps and you have drop off area. Um, so what we did was when we were designing the system, we have a stationary um, check-in area at the front where visitors would come in. Eventually be, we will be able to use this just like Raptor. Uh, it's a visitor management system so that'll be stationary there. And then we have built in rolling kiosks so to speak um, and also tablets and so the administrators can use those wherever they like uh, whatever fits their campus and their flow of pedestrian traffic in the campus. Um, so we're not tying them down to any one location but if students are coming through let's just say on the bus ramp um, we can scan 60 students a minute, uh, one per second coming in, so they're a lot more efficient than other ways uh, monitoring students. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate that. Absolutely. That's it. Thank you. Are your questions on for chief by chance? Mr. Rice, are yours for chief by chance? Chief, I wanted, I, I wanted to ask one more thing while you're up there. I'm sorry. So this year, I know that we're ramping up our elementary patrol, patrols. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So um, the board approved uh, some uh, 11 new uh, officer positions and two sergeant positions. Uh, we're in the process of hiring and training those. Uh, our application process takes a little bit longer than, than most uh, in the district. But uh, once we get somebody hired, they go through a 16-week training program. So it's four months before they're ever cut loose and ready to be on their own. Uh, so we're still in the process of hiring and training those folks, and uh, if, if we can keep officers uh, happy and excited to work here and, and we stay fully staffed, we'll get those uh, cut loose as, as fast as possible. We'll start the school year off with uh, partial um, patrol staffing for those 11 positions, uh, and then hopefully by December, I think we'll be pretty close to that 11. Outstanding. Thank you very much for that update. Mrs. James? Uh, thank you, Mr. Rodine. My question is not for Chief Ryder, so he can go back, I think, sit down. Um, thank you, though, for sharing all that exciting safety information because it's, uh, it's important for our students and our parents to feel that their kids are safe when they come to school. So just thank you for your commitment to that and the team that you lead to help, help lead that. So thank you. Uh, my question is uh, about the um, the box that I didn't hear anybody speak about that's in the middle of that uh, screen right there that says New School Boundary Oversight Committee. Beth is actually planning that once we get through this round of questions. Oh, okay. I, I thank Good, because I was like, okay, I know the community is going to ask about that, so I, I want to be sure somebody's mentioned that. So. Are we all good? All right. Beth? So last but not least, um, based on the board's work and the policy committee's work on approving policy FC local, which guides our attendance planning process in the district, we're able to make improvements in that planning process and the way in which we engage with the community at a deeper level. And we'll be partnering with the community to establish a school boundary oversight committee, which will allow for more engagement and input and oversight to the board um, based on direction and policy. We're excited that we opened up the the opportunity for applicants to to submit their interest last week on Wednesday and that application process will run through the 25th of August as of this afternoon we had just over 120 applicants already in the queue and so we look forward to receiving more uh, the membership on the SBOC will consist of three parents for each feeder pattern and one community member for each feeder pattern giving preference to the community members who may have participated in the board leadership academy 
um, we will be looking for representation across the district at each level, elementary, middle, and high school within those feeder patterns. And we just look forward to this deeper level of collaboration with the community in this process, which will um, ask members to serve a two-year overlapping term. In the inaugural year, we'll cast lots or draw um, numbers so that we'll have staggered membership with the first cohort having a one-year term and, the, and then a two-year term kind of split down the middle, and we'll, we'll cast those lots within the feeder pattern so we'll have um, equitable representation that will be on for two years and that way we carry that history throughout instead of losing the knowledge along the way. Thank you Mrs. Martinez. Uh, thank you Ms. Martinez. I just I, I want to comment on that because I think what I heard you say is I appreciate that this is coming from the policy that we recently uh, the board recently approved and this is kind of a new way of looking at um, the board basically getting um, having an advisory committee or having some help in getting some feedback from the community around um, around the new boundaries or, or any new boundaries that would be suggested so there's been a couple of rumors in the community about uh, watch out they're just trying to you know pull a fast one uh, or there's a secret agenda to all of this uh, I don't feel that there's any kind of secret agenda or surprise gotcha coming um, because we've been really transparent, but I just want to make sure from your perspective if there's a, uh, any surprises that the community might want to know about. Thank you. That's good feedback to know. Um, I think there are two things that come to mind as you mentioned that that really will show that this is an oversight to the board committee, similar to the bond oversight committee, and that is that our first meeting, when we begin meeting in September, is to go over the student enrollment review information and provide updates to the facilities master plan along with what staff you know, recommends that we move forward in terms of boundaries or student attendance areas, and then the oversight committee will study all of that information and provide input and oversight in that process, bringing recommendations to the board and to the community for further feedback and staff's role in that would be to take the feedback from the community and organize it in a way that the oversight committee can um, study further and then ultimately make recommendations to the board should an attendance boundary be a recommendation January of the year prior to implementation. Beth, okay. The other thing I would add Mrs. James is that the procedures for all of this is a, it's a very thick volume Beth and her team have done a remarkable job of developing very detailed, very comprehensive. Um, those We approved those as an E-team this morning. They're going to be provided to the board and posted publicly for the community to also have access to on the district website. So they'll be very transparent. The procedures will be there. And so they'll be able to follow along as we go through the process. I would also point out one of the key elements is that the committee itself will have elected officers that they elect and appoint amongst themselves that will serve as the voice to the board. So what we're, what kind of what we're taking out of the process is the black box where a committee recommends to the administration and then it comes to the board. The committee officers will stand with the administration as the board considers the various scenarios. Thank you. Um, so the only follow-up question to that is that I just want to make sure it's clear. These officers of this committee, the, their role is only to do the recommendation, not necessarily any other powers to be. I think, I want, you know, I just want to make sure when this committee is developed and chosen that we clearly understand from the public as well as what that role is. Um, so that there is no confusion of, you know, what they're to do when it comes to whether it be president or chair or whatnot when it comes to working with the board. Exactly. Okay. No, that's one thing, uh, main learnings we have gleaned from the last few years is clearly defining the role um, the, of the committee itself, but also the various t and the entitled roles and what that would mean. So that, that should be very clearly defined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Dupree, is that it? That's it. All right. We will now convene in closed session under the Texas Open Meetings Act, Chapter 551, and those mm -hmm. sections listed in the agenda for the purpose or private consultation with the board's attorney on any or all subject matters authorized by law. We are now convening in closed session.